It recently came out that both Google and Apple were secretly sending information about people's push notifications to the US government and to other foreign government bodies. Now, this should be a concern to you because, well, for one, all illegal government spying really should be a concern to its citizens. It was such a concern to the Founding Fathers that they actually wrote it into the Bill of Rights. Warrantless searches are a violation of the Fourth Amendment. They literally saw it as the fourth most important thing behind free speech, the right to own guns, and your right to not let soldiers stay in your house and treat it as a bed and breakfast when they need a place to stay. But on a more technical note, push notifications actually contain a lot of data and a lot of metadata, such as what apps you're using on your phone, when you use them, what your location was at the time when you received that push notification, people that you're interacting through the app, and in some cases, they're even able to get the full unencrypted text of the push notification that showed up on your phone's screen. Now, it really should not come as a surprise to you that Google was sending your push notifications to the US government and to other foreign government bodies because Google isn't even hiding the fact that they are an evil company anymore. They literally removed don't be evil from their company motto. And it's probably pretty well known at this point that if you're using a stock Android device, a significant amount of your personal data is being sent to Google servers and it's being stored and of course monetized by Google. Uh, and also it's being sent to servers that are owned by the handset manufacturers like Samsung, OnePlus, Xiaomi, or any of the other dozen or so Chinese smartphone manufacturers that have cropped up over the year. You should be assuming if you have one of those phones that every dick pic that you've taken with that device is being sent to Google and the CCP servers. However, there is a silver lining with Android phones and that is the fact that you can modify the core software of them, at least on some phones where you're able to get root access and or install a custom ROM that was pre-modified by someone else to enhance your privacy when using an Android device. You also have the ability on all Android phones, as far as I know, to sideload apps without root or without a custom ROM from somewhere like the F-Droid store or you could even use the Aurora store to install applications from the Google Play store, but without a Google account, which helps to reduce the tracking ability of those apps that are not connected to a Google account. So I would expect for more and more people who care about their privacy and who are using Android phones to actually start making these modifications and actually you know, go through with making those modifications to their phones and possibly even support the developers of those various Android ROMs and privacy respecting app stores with donations so that they can actually continue doing what they do for the community. And then we have Apple, who I look at a little bit differently when it comes to this. Uh, because Apple has successfully brainwashed the members of their cult, or at least most of the members of their cult, into thinking that Apple actually cares about their privacy. And to Apple's credit, they've done this in some very clever ways. So for one, a stock iOS device contains far less spyware than a stock Android device. Things like app tracking transparency have made Facebook and Google's attempts to track users on iOS and to serve them targeted ads all but completely useless once they just you know, enable that for various apps on their iPhone. And finally, we've got headlines like this one that pop up every few years that drinkers of the Apple Kool-Aid will point to and say, look, Apple wouldn't even unlock the iPhone of a hecking mass shooter. So my super secret GIF folder must surely be safe on my iPhone Areno. Now, defenders of the Apple cult are going to tell you something like, dude, you don't understand. The government issued these companies a gag order. They were, you know, they weren't allowed to talk about the fact that they were sending your personal information to the government in the first place. And this is true. And I don't expect any company out there, you know, any billionaire CEO to break the law and to face jail time to preserve their customers' privacy. That's just not practical. But to sit there 
with your head in the sand and pretend like Apple, the most valuable company in the world with an almost $3 trillion market cap, can't do anything to stop this? For you to actually think that is completely ludicrous. Apple could open source iOS. They could open their iPhones and their tablets up to modifications like we get in the world of Android, which by the way, that would probably make every like hobbyist modder that isn't poor enough to afford Apple hardware to actually switch to that because Apple hardware is typically superior to the phones and the tablets, definitely superior to the tablets that we get in the Android world. And then the people that actually care about their privacy could take steps to better protect themselves by removing the bits of code within iOS that send these push notifications to the government and or just use apps that are sideloaded from a different store that don't have these kinds of spyware push notifications built in. And then the government spooks would have to go to the house of each and every individual that's running the modified version of iOS to get their sensitive data the old fashioned way. And the government is gonna run out of spooks long before they even end up getting a fraction of those people's information. Because even the spooks value their lives, the spooks value the lives of their families, and you know, they're gonna do the math in their little spook brain and they'll quickly realize that the risk of having an open source IED installed in their loved one's vehicle by a GNU slash jihadi is not worth violating people's Fourth Amendment rights. You see, this is the beauty of free and open source software. The user controls the program instead of the program controlling the user. The end user is able to modify the program as they wish, and if they don't own a pair of programming socks, then they can reach out to someone who does and also has the programming talent to make the necessary modifications to a program, and then they can distribute that modified version of the program themselves. And again, I'm sure that Apple cult followers are going to quote Apple's chief information officer by saying that an open platform is so much more dangerous to hackers. Oh my gosh, it's open to hackers. We can't allow side loading. But I think end user hardware, end user software being closed down is actually less secure because it limits your ability to learn about your device. It limits your digital literacy. And iPhone users just shouldn't be treated like cattle in feedlots that are forced to eat whatever slop Apple chooses to feed them. They should be free range, able to freely select what apps they install and how they modify their operating system as they choose, like a happy cow who goes and grazes and picks the best pieces of grass to munch on. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it to hack the algorithm and help support the channel by buying my merch on base.win. This Come and Find It shirt that I'm wearing comes in 12 different colors, and there's also the Come and Find It hoodie, which comes in 12 different colors as well. And of course, you can save 10% automatically at checkout on base.win with all products by paying in Monero XMR. Have a great rest of your day.